studio. When you're painting landscapes in watercolour, the sky area is very often the biggest area of your picture. So in this video, I'm going to show you four very easy ways to paint the skies in your landscape paintings. Are you ready? I've got pyrrole orange and I've got quinacridone gold. Now these are all Daniel Smith paints, which I absolutely adore. Now the reason I <coughs> excuse me, the reason I'm using this big palette is I can put my little blobs of paint on the side here, and if I run out, I can very easily pop them into the little wells and mix up some more paint. So those are the those are the colours that I'm going to use. And I'll be using, as I always do, my big brushes, my big wash brush, and I'm going to make my paper wet first of all for my first sky. So I'm going to make the um, area here wet all the way down. Now these big wash brushes are made of goat hair. They're incredibly soft, so for doing big washes they're absolutely ideal. Now my water is probably going to be drying quite quickly because I actually live in Spain and at the moment outside it's 31 degrees but in my studio here <laughs> I hate to tell you that it's 39 degrees so this is going to be drying ever so quickly so I'm having to paint quite fast so you wet the paper and as you've noticed before I've already got all my, um, all my colours mixed up, and you wait for the real gloss to go off the paper, which in this heat is not going to take very long. And then you take some of your blue, as I'm going to use, and I'm going to start putting my wash on. My paper is a little bit too wet at the moment because I can see it's furring at the edges, so I'll wait just a little bit longer and then I'll start putting my wash onto my sky. That's better, here we go. Now with a big wash brush like this, it doesn't take you long to cover a large area. Whatever area you're doing when you're painting with watercolour, use the biggest brush that you can. If you're fiddling around with little brushes like this, it'll take you forever. And also you'll get nasty little hard lines now because my paper is wet, I can play around with it as much as I like. Because when your paint is wet, it's alive. Once it's dried, there's not a lot you can do with it except remove it or put another layer of paint over the top. So you want to keep your paint wet for as long as you can, depending on what it is that you're painting. So there we go. Now I want to take out some clouds. Now my little, uh, or my large watercolour wash brush is a bit too soft for that. So I'm going to use my three quarter inch flat. Now what I do is I make it damp. I don't go in with a dry brush, I go in with a, a damp brush and I squeeze off the water. And then I can wriggle my brush, <coughs> excuse me, I can wriggle my brush around and I can take out my clouds. Now how easy is that? And then remove that paint from your brush with a tissue, otherwise you're going to be putting paint back in because there's paint in the brush. So take it out. And then I can take out whatever cloud areas I want. Now, yes, you can do it by dabbing a tissue onto the, onto the paint, but that gives you very hard, sharp edges. I prefer to have the little soft edges, because clouds are very soft, gentle, floating around the sky. 
So take the paint out of my brush and I can remove whatever I want to. I mean, there, there is nothing easier than that, look. But I must remember to take it out of my brush every time. So that's one very easy, simple way of doing a sky. If I wanted to have some shadows in my um, clouds, then there is a lovely colour that we can use for clouds, and it's a colour that everybody has got. You will have it in your paint box. Unless your uh, paint box is absolutely brand spanking new, you will have this colour in your paint box. And this colour is called, wait for it, Palette Muck. <laughs> now, if you look around the corners of your paint box, you will find little bits of paint left behind where you've done mixes and things. And that's what we call Palette Muck. And it is wonderful for putting shadows into clouds. There we go. So you don't have to mix up a special colour for it. Just use little bits that are left behind in your palette. Now if you don't like what you've done, because my paint is wet, look what I can do. I can come down and I can go all the way over it and take it all out and start again. Now, if you were painting on dry paper, you can't do that. So I'll pick up my three-quarter inch brush again and have my tissue in my hand, and I can take out my clouds. Wriggle, wriggle, wriggle. How easy is that? And the more you take it out, the whiter they get. So if you want really white clouds, then just go back in, but always remember to take the paint out of your brush. Just go back in, wriggle, 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 and there's a slightly whiter cloud, because I've taken out more paint. Now the next one I'm going to do is, this time I'm going to make it wet, and I'm going to paint around my clouds. It's what we call negative painting. When you paint around an object, and then the object is revealed when you've finished. So wet my paper. I always work on wet paper if I possibly, possibly can. So I love the lovely, lovely soft edges and the transparency that it gives. So this time, I'm going to go in with my blue. And I'm going to paint around where I want my clouds. And I'm going to leave areas where I want the clouds to be. And remember, when you're going towards the horizon, clouds will be closer together because they're further away. Now, how easy is that? There's nothing easier than that, I can tell you. I'm just looking up at my camera, and yes, that's fine. So this is what we call negative painting. You paint around the object and leave the object as white paper. In this case, the object is a cloud. And while my, while my paper is still wet, if I wanted to, I could come back in again and I could make some of the areas a little darker if I wanted to. I can do anything I like while it's wet. So those were the first two ways to um, paint a sky with clouds. One of them you take the clouds out, and then the other one you paint around the area where the clouds are going to be. So now we'll have a look at using different colours. Now the next one I'm going to do, again, I'm going to do wet, wet, wet my sky. Big wash brush. Always use the biggest brush you can for the area you're painting. If I tried to do this, fiddling around with this little brush, I'd be for that half the day. 
And also I get nasty hard little lines when I start painting. So a great big brush is lovely. I either use that one or I use my big round brush. Now this time I'm going to use two colours, so I'm going to use my Crinacridone, uh, uh, my um, Pyrrhal um, Crimson. So I'll come in with that, draw this colour. See how quickly I covered that area with that big brush. And then if this is the horizon down here, then I can take out a little bit of my paint because the colour always goes lighter towards the horizon. And then I can come in with my blue. Notice I started at the top, because that's where you want the darkest colour. If I started in the middle, I'd have a dark stripe there. So I, I start at the top where it's, I want the dark colour, and I come down, and then I come right over my crimson, right over it, and blend the two together. And again, if you want to have a lighter area near the horizon of your painting, then just take the tissue, squeeze it out of your brush, and take some paint out. Now look at that, look at that lovely, lovely transparency. Because there is only one layer of paint there. If I painted the red and then I let it dry, and then I painted the blue and let that dry, that's two layers of paint, and it wouldn't be quite so transparent. By the way, this is the this is the container that I use for my water. It's got two compartments in it. One for washing my brush, and one for nice clean water for mixing my paints. So really useful, that is, I love it. And by the way, all the um, materials that I'm using in this video are actually listed in the description down below the video. Now for the fourth sky, I'm going to come in with some other colours this time. Once again, I'm going to make my paper, my paper wet. And then when you see the shine going off the paper, that's when you come in with your paint. You can look to the side just to see whether there's a gloss on it. And if the gloss is beginning to go, that's when you hit it with the paint. So I'm going to come in now with my um, quinacridone gold. It's a very, very vivid yellow, which I absolutely adore. So here we go. As I said, it's very hot in my studio today, so my paint is not taking very long to dry. If you're living in a cooler climate, you might have to wait a little bit longer for the shine to go off your paint. Um, for the shine to go off your paper, I should say. So now I come in with my orange. And just look at the size of the brush I use. But you can get lovely, lovely sharp little lines because this comes to a real chiselled edge. So the lines you can get on this are actually quite detailed. And I can, I can drop in a bit of my red. And as I've said before, when your paint is wet, it's alive. And you can make it do whatever you want. So I'm going to make it nice and flat down here, but this is going down towards my, my horizon. Now if I wanted to, I could put a little bit of a darker purple in here. If you're doing clouds that are going towards your horizon, they will be much closer together. The nearest part of the sky to you is the bit at the top here. This is the bit above your head, if you like. And this bit down here will be the bit that's towards the nearest to the horizon. 
So everything down here is going to be slightly closer together than anything that you've got further up. Now look how those colours are all blending together. The consistency of the paint I've got is probably about the consistency of full cream milk. Heading towards single cream. <laughs> so it's not weak and watery. I can almost, I can almost tip up my palette and it won't run out. So that's how thick the paint is. And with watercolour, your paint will always dry lighter than you think it's going to. So when you're painting something and you think, oh, that looks really nice, that's the right colour, well, it won't be. Because when it's dried, it's going to be totally different. It dries about one third lighter. So provided I keep this wet, and if it's very warm, like it is in my studio here, I can spray this with a little spray bottle. Spray it quite a way above it so that you don't get drops on your painting. And provided that stays wet, I could play around with that for quite a long time. Now we'll let that dry. We'll come back, take off the tapes, and we'll have a look at them. Okay, I've taken off the tapes. Let's have a look at the first one we did. This is the one where we took out the clouds using the three quarter inch brush, having put the sky on with the great big wash brush, played around with it, took it out, and remembering to squeeze out the brush on, on a tissue to remove the paint before you go back in and do it again. And on this one, we did what we call negative painting. And negative painting is painting around the object. So I painted around my clouds and left the clouds as white paper. I actually love this way of doing it. And when that is still wet, if you wanted to, you could drop in that magic colour called palette muck. And you could drop in some shadows in the clouds because it's still wet and it'll allow you to do that. But I just love this streakiness here and this freedom of the little, lovely little soft edges. That's a nice way to do it, but I prefer this way. And then we went on to doing a completely flat, what we call graduated wash, where you've got two colours and you put the two colours in onto wet paper and you combine them together. And once again, that's where the lovely big wash brush comes in. Just a few strokes and you've got to the bottom. And then we come on to the last one. I think you can see it there. Yeah, you can, okay. Have you noticed these big clips, by the way? I don't stretch my papers, I clip them to the board. And then when they start to wrinkle, I just flatten them out. So I have big clips all over my board. Now this is where we put in um, all the different colours. Started off with the yellow, and then dropped in the orange and dropped in the red, and came back in with a little bit of dark purple, and made the little cloud areas a bit closer together as they get towards the horizon. And provided this was still wet, I could have played around with this for as long as I wanted to. Putting colours in, taking colours out, because when your paint is wet, it is alive. Once it's dried, not a lot you can do with it, except perhaps put another layer over the top, or remove some of it with a damp brush. You can't do any of this sort of thing when it's dry. So, four different ways of painting skies, and you can adapt these in any way you like to suit what you're doing. Remember when you're painting in watercolour that your paints, when they're wet, they are alive. But once they've dried, not a lot you can do with them, really. I know there are times when you need to have your paint dry if you're doing a lot of detailed work, and yes, of course, it does have to be dry then. But if you can possibly keep it wet for as long as you can, you will get beautiful transparent paintings. Have a look at my video where I've actually concentrated on transparent colours.
and you'll find a card to that video linked just above my head there somewhere. If you haven't done so already, then consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you don't miss anything in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember my motto, there is an artist in everyone.